Hey guys, Lester, and welcome to another Minecraft video here on the channel. Now, I know before you say anything, this is not a mod showcase. As you can probably tell by the title of the thumbnail, this is a regular Minecraft version review today because if you guys haven't heard in the grapevine, Minecraft 1.15 released last week, so we are in that version now. And actually, funny enough, we're not even in 1.15 almost anymore. We are heading on to 1.15.1. The pre-releases have already come out for that. However, today, guys, we are just going to be reviewing 1.15. So, welcome to the world of 1.15. It seems not too long ago we were in 1.14 for the first time, but 1.15 has brought a few things to the world. Now, I didn't really look too much into it. I know after reviewing like the snapshots and stuff, obviously this is the bee update where have the beehives, all that, which I will be going over in more depth depth but um i heard there was a lot of other mechanics added and changed so we're going to be going over all that i will have the wiki pulled up so the information i will be getting is directly from the minecraft wiki so i will have that link in the description so you guys can follow along with me and without further ado let's get this but before we do let me just ask you guys if you have been enjoying these minecraft version reviews on the channel definitely smash that like button let's try to go for maybe like just 10 likes on this video that would show that you guys are hyped and excited for this and I am too, because every new version of Minecraft means we are one step close to being perfected. I mean, apparently 1.10 was like the perfected version, but that besides the point. Let's get into this. So let me just pull up that tab right now so I can third things off. So it says 1.15, the first release of the Buzzy Bees is a major update to the Java Edition released on December 10th. Of course, we're five days late. Actually, we're going to be six days late because this is going up tomorrow, so... That's a thing. Um, it added bees and bee-related items, such as beehives, honey bottles, and honeycombs. Alongside added bees, this update focused on bug fixes, improving performance, they always say that, as well as adding numerous features that were originally in the Bedrock Edition exclusiveness. So if you guys haven't heard recently, um, PlayStation and a lot of other systems added cross-compatibility. So I don't know if PC has that now yet as well. I'm sure I might read about it if they did add it. But I know that the PC version is trying to adapt a lot of things from the Bedrock Edition. I know 1.14, they took a few things from it, and they're doing that once again for 1.15. So that's the thing as well. So that's pretty huge that we're getting almost like fully cross compatibility in Minecraft. A few years ago, that probably would never even been a thing. But also, I should probably preference while I'm going over this stuff, this is my, like I said, like raw reaction to it slash like overview. If I do mess up saying something or if I do say something that's slightly incorrect, feel free to correct me in the comments and be like, hey, at this time stamp you said this, you probably meant this or something. And I greatly appreciate it. I'm sure everyone else watching the video would too as well. But um, also for those curious, this being the first seed in 1.15 I've ever reviewed, here's the seed. If you guys want to check it out for yourselves, this is the um, full-blown area slash, I guess, island. It's kind of funny because you got this like village slash shipwreck area right here and then there's this i wanted to start by like the beehive areas but i couldn't find one initially i didn't want to just spend time exploring the world i wanted just to jump in and start doing this so let's start things off with the block edition so first things first we have the where is it the beehive the beehive can be crafted using six planks and three honeycombs um it can house bees believe it or not believe it or not how i get it um it can stack with 64 as you can see um it fills up with honey. The amount of honey in a beehive, here, I'll place one right here. The amount of honey in a beehive increases as bees gather nectar and return to their hive. We saw that in the snapshot I reviewed, which that video will also be linked in the description if I can find it. Um, just so you guys can see that this this actually was a thing here. I'll put you right there. Um, a player can harvest the honey, harvest honeycombs and honey bottles from the hive using shears and glass balls, respectively. Um, if the player breaks and har or harvests honey from the hive the bees will become hostile on the player we also experience that um bees inside the hive will not turn hostile if the har if it is harvested with silk touch but bees inside the hive will interesting um bees will not turn hostile if there is a lit campfire nearby the hive when honeycombs or honey balls are harvested so essentially if you're trying to get the bees to uh cooperate with you you just want to plant a campfire down and then you can harvest the honey or whatever you need um Um, it is a block entity and cannot be pushed by pistons, so you cannot use pistons with this, so rip any sort of automation with that you might be trying. Um, and when instantly mined in creative mode, they will drop as an item and if they contain any bees. So that's cool. 
Um, that is everything to do with the beehive. Of course, we might be tapping back into that soon enough. But next thing we need to talk about is the bee nest. Now, this is the bee nest right here. I'm actually going to place one very nearby just in case we need to trigger it. Um, so the bee nest spawn naturally in flower forest plains and sunflower plain biomes. The function is the same as the beehive and requires silk touch to be dropped. I just dropped one. Oh, no, wait. Time set day. Slash game rule do daylight cycle. I don't know what am I doing. Do daylight cycle false. I completely forgot to do this. Um, uh, okay, so that's the beehive right there. Next up is the honey block. Honey blocks. This is the honey block right here. Pretty cool. Wait, what's this noise? Oh, it sounds like a normal block. I don't know why I thought that would sound any differently. Um, but. Can be crafted with three honey bottles. Um, the bottles not consumed will remain in the crafting grid. Uh, it's stickier than slime blocks, apparently. Can I like bounce? No. Um, uh, players' jump height is drastically reduced. Players walk very slow and cannot sprint on them. I was sprinting on them. Wait a minute. Let me go into survival mode while I'm saying this. I am sprinting on it. Okay, interesting. Again, I know already since the the patch, like 1.15.1 has coming out, um, there probably is some glitches already that will be fixed, but apparently you're not allowed to sprint on them, according to this. Um, an effect also works as though like non-full blocks like carpets and slabs. Not sure what that means. Um, when a honey block is pushed or pulled by a piston, it attempts to move all just adjacent blocks the same direction. Interesting. Works the same as any slime block. Um, honey blocks do not stick to slime blocks. That's another thing I was trying to... Oh, oh, I get it. I get it. What's saying? Never mind. I get that. Um, if an entity is on a honey block and is pushed by a piston, the entity will be removed with the honey block. Will be moved with honey block, I should say. Um, entities touching the side of the honey block slide down slowly. And landing on a honey block reduces fall damage. I guess you're about right on that statement. Um, next up. Oh, fall damage is cut by one fifth of normal. Tells you right there. Uh, mobs will usually avoid walking on them, interesting enough. Um, does not conduct red sun signals, and bees will occasionally eat from them if placed near the beehives or nests. Interesting. I might, I might just put one right there for later when we're experimenting with the bees. I'll also put one like right there <laughs> um and don't worry we'll be getting to the bee soon okay so next up is the honeycomb block which is oh i messed up this is the honey block this is the honeycomb block someone's probably yelling at me right now oh no okay so what i've been talking about this entire time is this block now because this actually looks like a slime block and yeah 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 I'm sorry, I messed that up. This is the honey block that I was just talking about. The honeycomb block. What's the honeycomb block do? Can be crafted by four honeycombs and is purely decorative. <sighs> just let me just 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 give me a second. I have to. Archway. Wait. I made a tent, like a one block, I, d ignore me. Okay, uh, next up we are on to the items. So next up is the honey bottles. That's this beautiful thing right here. Honey bottles are obtained by using the honey on the hive slash nest, as we stated before. It restores six or three hunger things and it adds 2.4 saturation, which is really cool. So it's essentially bread, um, removes the poison effect when consumed. So if you drink honey, you won't be poisoned anymore if you're ever poisoned. Can be crafted with sugar and honey blocks, and it can stack up to 16, as you can see right there. So if you're ever poisoned fighting those poison spiders in the caves, you just, you just, and you'll be good. So that's all you need to do with those. So that's really cool, and I like that. Um, the honeycombs, which are these right here, honeycombs can be obtained by using shears on the beehive slash nests, and can be used to craft beehives and honeycomb blocks, as we saw. Finally, 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 spawn eggs, the bees. I actually forgot to grab them, so let me do that. So the bees, 
the birds, the bees. Uh, let's grab one of them and talk about them. So the bee being the only mob added in with this version, I know some people are upset with that, saying like, oh, you spent literally like six months working on this version and you added a bee. We have to understand how Mo how Mojang is working now with their versions is they're making like multiple versions at a time and then just releasing them over a, a, a straight period. So to my understanding, 1.13 and 14 were made together and then split in half. I think 1.15 and 1.16, which is that nether update that we saw whenever they um they posted that video showcasing it, I believe those were meant to be not meant to be together, but they were made together and then they split them in half. I don't know entirely what the reason for that all is, but you know what? Let's get some bees in here. So let's spot in these lovely little critters. Let them do their thing. Um, they can explore around. So the bees. Bees have 10 health or 5 hearts. Um, they live in groups near hives and nests. If a bee does not have a home nest, it will wander until it finds one. Um, how do we already have a baby bee? How, did I accidentally do that or did that just happen? Anyway. Um, they can hide inside hives. Maximum 3 bees per nest. When attacked, all bees of the same hive will try to attack the original attacker. The same happens if their hive or nest is destroyed. Placing a campfire, we already talked about that, will make them passive. Um, they can have an ang... Did he just eat that? What happened? I heard... Oh, he went in here. That's what happened. Um, um, they can have an anger data tag, which defaults to zero. That's interesting. So... I don't know if that means, like, it's an effect that they get, like an anger effect, or if that's actually just the programming. Um, when the bee is attacked, this tag will be around, will last around 700 ticks. So that's, like, 700 seconds, the bee will be angry. When they attack, they give poison, ironically what the honey is for, to the target for about 10 seconds, and th then they die 50, second, 50 to 60 seconds after attacking, similar to how bees work in real life. Uh, when bees attack the player, their eyes turn red. So, as you can see, this bee has blue eyes, he's cute and adorable, and he's not going to kill me. Um, uh, they are affected by Bane of Arthropods enchantments. So, finally, the Bane of Arthropods enchantment has something to gain other than the um, just killing spiders. As we've seen in the past, that's that's always been the kind of shtick with that, is you only need Bane of Arthropods or spiders, otherwise it's useless. We have another thing that is that vein of arthropods affects now, bees. Um, they can be bred using any type of flower, um, including wither roses. Of course, the wither rose, the dreaded flower that I never actually got to play with much in 1.14. Um, uh, they will follow any player holding a small flower. Um, if the player holds still, the bees will hover around them. Oh, if the player holds still, the bees will just kind of, yeah. Oh, look, they're pollinating. Look at them go. Uh, um, if you guys remember how it kind of works, I think I'm about to go over it, but the bees, they go to the flowers, they collect the pollen, then they actually go back to beehives and then take the pollen there and make their honey. Um, it's really cool. And you can tell when they have the pollen on them because they have those little white particles on their butts. It's really cool. Uh, where was I? Okay. They will hover around flowers and, and, and will enter a pollinated state, quote unquote, like I just talked about when pollinated the white particles. Um, the bees will also have its texture changed to include the dots similar to the pollen particles, like, again, like I've been saying, I don't, oh, they're, look at them, look at them go over that flower. Oh, and then the baby one just kind of stole that show really quickly. Um, uh, bees will try to pollinate wither roses despite the fact they are harmed when affected by the wither. That's really cool. So, like, if there's a wither rose, the bees will still try to pollinate it even though they're going to get the wither effect. That is so, I don't know if that's the coolest thing, but it's, um, yeah, uh, when they pollinate flowers, a small popping noise is heard. We actually did hear that. Um, they will turn to their nest in their pollinated state. A pollinated bee can accelerate the growth of crops and sweet berry bushes. It passes. So if bees are actually around your crop fields, it will make crops grow faster. So this is actually the, another way other than bone meal to make crops grow faster these days, which is really cool if you think about it. Is this guy without like a home? He's just kind of sitting here. Um, that's actually really cool. Um, af after enough bees enter the bee nest, in a pollinated state, the bee nest will be filled with honey. Um, they also will try to avoid water. Bees don't like water um, for, for obvious reasons. And being killed by a bee sting results in a new death message. Player was stung to death. So there's actually a new death message. Now that's really cool. 
Now, I don't know what happens if it starts raining. It doesn't actually talk about that. Slash weather. Thunderstorm. Let's see what happens. All right, so we have a thunderstorm. Are you... They're not dying, it seems, but they are trying to get into their homes. Okay, very good to know. Weather, let's turn it back to clear. All right, that, that is good to know that that happens. I don't know how many bees are in these nests now. Can I, like, check? No, I can't. Wait, can I control V and check? Okay, so there is actually data stored with them whenever you do that. If you guys didn't ever know that in Creative Mode, if you control V, you can actually copy the stuff that's in chess and then get the same result after the fact. Um, it just says that plus NBT. Essentially means that there is data stored within it. So that shows that there are um, bees inside these. It's really cool because I think if I just do... Yeah, if I just do it with the regular block, I won't show that that data number. Code. Whatever. Uh, buh, 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 buh. Data format. Oh, we don't need to worry about any of that. Entity selectors, no. Game rules, no. Loot tables, no. Gameplay. No, I'm trying to see if there's any extra things. Because I heard there were some other things. No. Oh, changes right here. Okay, so changes to bells. Bells will now ring if powered by a redstone signal. Campfires can now be extinguished with a shovel. Interesting. Uh, that makes sense, but still interesting. Here, I'll let you not see the interface. You guys can watch the bees while I'm reading this. Um, compositors now crafted with wooden slabs, like the Bedrock Edition, instead of fences or wooden planks. So they changed the crafting recipe for compositors. Um, dark Prism Ream is now crafted with black dye instead of ink sacks. Oh, hi, little bee. Hi, little bees. What are you guys doing? Oh, they want in there. And actually, you can see the honey is now coming off of that. That's really cool. Um, and stone brick now have a hardness of three and now have a blast resistance of 45. I don't know if that's higher or lower, but that happened. Uh, farmland blocks can now be manually placed on farmland without turning it into dirt. Can also now be pushed into it by a piston without turning the farmland under the block. And the piston has to push the dirt. Sure. Um, iron doors must now be mined with a pickaxe for it to be dropped as an item. So I guess before you could kind of punch the door and it would still drop. Interesting. Um, large ferns now will drop wheat seeds. Okay. Um, yeah, we're still going with the mob changes or <laughs> mod item changes. I mean, sorry. Um, melon stems and pumpkin stems attached to stems now drop their seeds again when broken. I guess that didn't happen before. Rails now places... Uh, facing the player rather than always north slash south. I didn't know that. Actually, wait, I think I did know that. Um, redstone comparators can now detect how much honey is inside of the beehives and bee nests. The output strength is equal to the amount of honey in the hive. Scaffolding increased scaffolding bird time when you use the fuel and furnace. They can smell now two items rather than the 0 0.25. Um, stripped wood can now be crafted out of stripped logs. Speaking of stripped stuff, I noticed in creative mode, now I could be wrong about this, but I swear 1.14, they did not show you the stripped blocks in creative mode, but now they are. Um, yeah, we just said that. Okay, wet sponges now dry out when placed in the nether. So you don't have to use a furnace on them anymore. You can just place them in the nether and that will work. Uh, moving on to the items, we have boats. When used as fuel, one boat now spelts six items in a furnace, blast furnace or smoker instead of one. And spawn eggs, drowned husk, zombie, zombie pigment, and zombie villager spawn eggs can now be used on adult versions of these mobs to spawn the baby variants. Apparently you couldn't do that before. Okay, I was reading that for a second. I thought I missed something. I was like, wait, what? Okay, now on to the now on to the interesting stuff, the mobs. General, mobs are now better at avoiding walking through lava. Good job, mobs. Uh, Ender dragons, plural, uh, removed a black dot on the transparent parts of the wing texture. Interesting. It removed texture for part of the wing bottom in the exploding ender dragon. Apparently, there was texture issues. Okay, iron golems um, now starts cracking upon losing health. Wait, so if an iron golem... I can't spawn it. I don't have a spawn. Wait, slash summon... Uh, is it, oh no, it's still Iron Golem. I need to see this. Harming. I'm sorry, sir, but I need to test this. Oh my gosh, that looks cool. Okay, um, yeah, they're not wrong. Um, that does happen. Um, you can now, he can now be healed using Iron Ingots. You can heal him when, with Iron Ingots. 
One ironing it restores 25 slash 12.5 health. It now it takes four iron ingots to repair an iron golem from one HP to full health. So you literally can repair the iron golems now. They have a way of healing iron golems without health potions now. OMG. Okay. Magma cubes, ocelots, and slimes can now use the generic. I don't know why it's saying that. Generic dot attack damage attribute. I don't know what that means, but cool. Parrots can now sit on a player's shoulder even if the player is riding net. Players can now, or parrots can now sit on the player's shoulder even if the player is riding entity, um, and can no longer imitate Enderman, polar bears, wolves, or zombie pigmen. I guess they were doing that. Um, spawning. When breedable mobs in a group spawn naturally, they will sometimes give spawn babies in the groups. It has a 5% chance of happening with foxes, cows, pigs, sheep, and chickens, and 10% chance happening with wolves, llamas, and horses. Interesting. Apparently that wasn't a thing before. Oh, I see the bees are out again. Um, uh, villagers. The nitwit villagers no longer have a leveling gemstone on their belt. Okay, that's fair. Um, zombie villagers, zombie villagers that were converted from villagers can no longer despawn. I thought they fixed that in 1.14, but okay. Uh, foxes, foxes now spawn in all taiga variants. Good, because they were rare as heck to find. Um, for non-mob entities, dragon fireballs, the texture has been changed, and experience orbs, experience orbs now appear in the same location as the loot when the entity is killed so i guess before like how they just kind of spawned anywhere they now have to actually spawn their world generation oh boy we're getting into the deep stuff for trees birch trees generate in dark forest biomes once again apparently they didn't for a while i see them yep there's one literally right there birch forest huh i guess they're right that didn't happen for a while okay and uh what else sweet berry bushes can now spawn in the giant tree taiga biome as well good to know um trying to see is there anything else i think everything else is kind of self-explanatory again you guys can look i'm just kind of skimming through to see if there's any other things that they've done um you guys can look through everything i'll read a few of the of the fixed issues apparently they fixed 303 issues um, I'm just going to pick one at random and just read it. <laughs> yeah, as you know, every time there's a new version, there's always a billion issues that they fix. Okay. Uh, what's this? Banners do not move in wind when over a certain time value of the level data. Cool. Uh, what's this one say? Shooting an enderman with the bow and arrow or trident will play error trident collision sounds and subtitles. Cool. And again, as I'm reading this, this means there's something that this is something that was happening that wasn't supposed to. Trying to pierce floating when charging it while sneaking. All right, you heard it here first, folks. They fixed that too. Um, I'm not gonna again. I'm not gonna read over everything, but that's pretty much it. Uh, they do have at the bottom of their gallery a few screenshots of people using the different beehives. I might actually snag one of these for the thumbnail. I'm not sure though. We'll see. Um, but yeah, that's about gonna do it for this minecraft b update of course if there's any major changes in 1.15.1 i will still probably cover it um if it's like literally just bug fixes i'm not going to but if they change anything in terms of mechanics that i've gone over i probably will but again guys apologies for the video going out almost a week later than the update itself but i still wanted to cover it i know all the bigger youtubers have already done it but i still wanted to cover it for you guys for those that are just watching my channel but that being said, though, guys, let me know in the comments down below. Are you excited for this B update? Are you more excited for the Nether update? Or if you think this update should never happen, let me know. I'm curious to see. And I'll catch you all in the next video. Goodbye.